Well, good evening, folks. Thank you, Moonlight, for having me up. Uh, my name is Wes Berry. I'm the author of the Kentucky Barbecue book. And right now, I am stuffed to the gills, even though I, I could probably eat more if I allowed myself to. I used to come up here when I was in college. I went to college at Western Kentucky University, 75 miles down the road, and we would load up a well, we would fill the car up, and a group of us guys would drive up here and tank up. And back then, I could eat, I don't know, several plates of food. I can't do that anymore. I'm not hauling hay and cutting tobacco and doing all that business, whatever the case. Uh, Moonlight invited me up to chew the fat with you on Kentucky barbecue, something I know a little bit about. I've eaten at 200 barbecue places in the state now, some of them multiple times. I've, um, I got the idea to write this book back in, I guess I officially started in 2009, but I'll rewind a little bit. By the way, I don't have any prepared notes here, so this will be much like my teaching, which is all over the place. Just hang in there. And I might say something smart. <laughs> so uh, I grew up in Barron County, Kentucky. And Glasgow is the you know the town center or the county seat, and the the kind of barbecue that I grew up eating was what they call Monroe County style. They take the Boston butt and freeze it, which enables them to slice it thinly with a, with a bandsaw. And they grew, you know they grill those pork ovals over hickory coals for 30, 45 minutes. Meanwhile, sopping it with a dip of butter, lard, vinegar, cayenne pepper, black pepper, salt and other special things. And that's, for me, that was what barbecue was. And then I went away to graduate school. I lived in North Mississippi for a while and I had my first Memphis dry rub ribs down there. And then I got a job up near Chicago for a while and I lived in the barbecue wastelands of the Middle West. And I, I, I would, while living up near Chicago, I thought, oh man, when I go home, I'm really gonna get me some barbecue because I miss it so much. When I moved back to, Kentucky in 2005, I started watching the Travel Channel shows and the Food Network shows, and they would have these shows about America's Best Barbecue. This one that I remember in particular had these cowboys out in California, and they were, the cowboys were the judges, and they were sampling America's you know, best regional styles. And of course, they focused on Memphis, Kansas City, North Carolina, and Texas. Nobody ever said anything about Kentucky. And I thought, well, you know, I know that we have some good barbecue in the state. I'm going to find out what we have because nobody had written a book about it. So in 2009, I set off in my uh, rusty old Ford Ranger, and my goal was to eat at every barbecue place in the state. Um, it took me a while, but I got around to the majority of them. And in this book, I talk about my favorite places, places that I found that were at least good according to my good standards. Uh, I know that, like with any food, you know, taste preferences are very subjective, and I just tell you what I like. I like meats that are appropriately tender, regardless of the animal. I like many of God's creatures deliciously smoked. I have a friend who wrote a book called Holy Smoke, the big book of North Carolina barbecue. John Shelton Reed is the guy. And in the first of that book, he lays out what North Carolina barbecue is. And he basically says it's pork. It's pork from a whole hog or from a, a shoulder cooked up over, you know, good hardwoods a good long time. And that's North Carolina barbecue. And you have a couple different, different soft styles. Well, what I've discovered driving all around Kentucky and sampling our regional styles is that Kentuckians are much more generous when it comes to the kind of animal that they'll throw on the pit. So basically, uh, most of the 200 places that I've eaten at are west of Interstate 65. For some reason or another, I don't know why, Eastern Kentucky is not a great place to get barbecue. I was uh, I stopped in Winchester, Kentucky, and stopped at a, a, a fire station, and I asked the guy, where do you get barbecue around here? And he said, we don't have any barbecue restaurants around here. He said, people are doing it. He said, Kroger down the road sells out of briskets because people are cooking them up their house. But we don't have barbecue restaurants. He didn't know why either. I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out. 
whatever the case. West Kentucky, as you know, is a barbecue hotbed. And I, I'm just delighted. I've, I've had barbecue here in this state as good as I've had anywhere. I'll tell you a little bit about the different regional styles I, I discovered. Uh, there's a map in the book, but if I hold it up, you won't be able to see it anyway. It's so small. So imagine, you know, the western part of Kentucky as it's going into the Mississippi River. Over, say, from Inter Interstate 65, you know, which runs from Louisville to Nashville. West of that, the dominant barbecue style is pulled pork from whole shoulders or Boston butts. Often cooked on traditional masonry pits. You know, where the, you know, the wood is cooked down to coals and the guys are shoveling the coals underneath the meat every hour or so. And in addition to that dominant style, pull, like pull pork from long cooked pork shoulders of Boston butts, you get, um, of course, the, the, the mutton, which you only find in here in Owensboro and Davis County. Um, down in Hopkinsville, you get a little bit of mutton there. But basically, I lay out <coughs> in, in this book the different counties that serve mutton, and there are only a half dozen of them, I guess. And they're all kind of, like, this would be the top of what I call the mutton tree right here. And it's, it's uh, Davies County. And what's to the left of you here, Henderson? Henderson, <laughs> McLean, Ohio. Mm -hmm. So basically, you take those three or the counties or whatever here bordering the Ohio River, and then go down to Hopkinsville and down to Todd County, and you pretty much got your your mutton with a few places here and there that serve it as well. Only 18 places of the 200 that I've eaten that do mutton on a regular basis. Um, as you all will testify, the, the the price of mutton's gotten really expensive. And this guy I talked to over in far west Kentucky said, we used to serve mutton, but he, he gave, I think he said it's, it's, we're paying three sixty nine dollars on the hoof or something like that for it. He said the price has tripled in the last little bit, so we're not serving it. We only do it by special order, he said, because we can't afford to have it left over. So you got your, your, your pulled pork from whole pork shoulders, your mutton, and where I'm from in South Central Kentucky, that that really odd Monroe County style that I just described earlier was basically grilled pork steaks uh, cooked for a, a really short time. And other than that, Louisville is, is kind of its own little barbecue area, but there's, it's not a distinctive barbecue region. They just do a little bit of everything as you'd expect a big city would do. I tended to find more beef served in Louisville, brisket, and even beef ribs, which is something you don't see much of in Kentucky. Burgoo, I only found that at 18 places of the 200 that I've eaten at. And they're not the same 18 places, it's just coincidental. You had 18 places serving mutton on a regular basis, 18 places serving burgoo. Some of those places were the same, but some of them were different as well. There are even a couple places in Louisville that do burgoo, but it's very different from what I had here tonight. You know, they, they, uh, they don't cook it down as much. So, uh, my methods for writing this book were, I would go to the internet, try to find out what barbecue places were open. Of course, sometimes, I, but I didn't have a cell phone when I was doing this. So I would take off in my little Ford Ranger, using a road map to try to get wherever I was going. Didn't have GPS. And I would sometimes, uh, or all too often, arrive at a barbecue place that was closed. Well, once on the internet, always on the internet, I guess. So uh, I started, that was my original method, but then I started calling Chamber of Commerces and quickly learned that they're not very helpful. If you don't, if you don't advertise with the Chamber, they're not going to recommend the businesses that, that aren't with the Chamber. So then I started uh, calling Sheriff's Departments and I got some, I surprised some people. Yeah, they thought, what? You're calling from Bowling Green, Kentucky, and you're calling me here in East Kentucky, and you want to know, and this is a sheriff's apartment, and you want to know if we have barbecue around here? So I kind of stopped doing that. And then I started calling real estate offices. And the realtors were very useful. Uh, their, their, their business is to serve the customer well, and many of them were on the road all the time. So 
I got a lot of good barbecue recommendations from them. When I would go eat at one place, uh, if I liked it, I would ask to talk to the owners or the people cooking the meats and say, what other places would you recommend? Like, who's your good barbecue company around here? And they were, most of the time, they were generous and say, well, you should try this place and this place. So, in my uh, several years of meats in Kentucky, I, I gained 25 pounds <laughs> and uh, had to get on cholesterol meds and, and basically drove all over this gorgeous state um, trying to find out what we Kentuckians do in terms of barbecue. And I, I really was delighted with what I found. But back to my, what, what I like. Many meats deliciously smoked, appropriately tender, not sauced to death. And I did find out that in Appalachia, the couple of barbecue places that I ate at there, they, 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 the meats tend to come with a fair amount of sauce on them. Same with, uh, I ate at a place in Maysville, Kentucky, and the pulled pork sandwich I got was gooped up with sauce, kind of like you'd expect a sloppy joe to be. And, you know, I, not fond of that. Oh, one more thing. Uh, of course, you can't eat everything on the menu, so my, my methods vary, but usually I'll go into a place and say, look, I'm traveling. I travel two and a half hours to get here. I can't eat everything on the menu. Can I talk with the person, like, cooking the meats? I wonder what he or she would recommend, and I would, I would eat with what that person thought that they did best. And then sometimes if I revealed myself and said, oh, by the way, I'm writing this book on Kentucky barbecue, I would get some, uh, like, people would say, well, here, try this. I want you to try some of this. And I would get the taste around the menu more. My first day on the road, I drove from Bowling Green. This is back in summer of 2009. I drove from Bowling Green to Murray, Kentucky. I ate at a place in Murray. I ate another one in Murray. Then I went over to uh, Mayfield. In, sh in short, I ate at six or seven places that day. Then I went to stay with my buddy John over at Mayfield and got sick. <laughs> <laughs> and decided that I would have to change my methods. And also, you know, you can't give a place a good, fair evaluation if you're sick of eating already anyway. So I started making more trips, eating at just a couple of places each trip. And, and then I returned to some of those places that I ate that some of the places I first visited when I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I went back to them a few years later to sample them again and try to give them a, a better, honest review. I started taking my time more. I had a, a digital voice recorder that I would carry in with me to interviews. And also, you know, if you go into a barbecue place and don't want to uh, stand out, well, you know, it's kind of hard not to stand out if you're taking pictures of food, and also if you're uh, if you're writing stuff down. So I had my little digital voice recorder. I tried to discreetly keep it aside and basically take notes on the food as I was eating. Sometimes this was uncomfortable. For instance, uh, I was driving up through Louisville one day, and it was it was back in like 2012 maybe when we had this huge summer heat wave, like ridiculously hot. And it, that day that I was going through Louisville. I think the heat index was like 115 or something like that. Well, I went into bootleg barbecue there, and it was pretty crowded. I wanted to be private when I ate my meal, so I stupidly took my food outside, and I sat there in the heat, eating, talking to my digital voice recorder, mopping the sweat, you know. It, 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 the heat didn't affect my, my tastings much, but uh, that, that's the, the length I would go to to try to get some privacy and be able to eat and take some good honest notes in my digital voice recorder.